Hi, everybody. Welcome to Safer Hamitzvos. That's the formal name of the um, of the book that the Rambam wrote. So just to review, okay? Um, there's somebody called the Rambam. He was a great character, um, a great figure in, in Jewish study and literature. He um, wrote many, many, many books. His main book is called the Yara Chazaka. It's called the Mishnah Torah. It literally goes over all the halakha, all the laws of the Torah. So when somebody learning it, they learn the entire Torah. And that's why the Rebbe in 1984 instituted this idea of learning Rambam. Um, so the, the initial one was learning it and in, finishing it an entire year. So there's 14 books with many, many, many chapters. If you learn three chapters a day, then you'll finish it under a year. So the, it, the cycle, it's not like some Torah where we start the same day every year and we end the same day every year. Um, but almost, almost a full year, you'll finish it. But the Rebbe says, this is something that's really important because we're covering the entire Torah. So we want to make sure to include every body's capabilities in this so the next track and it's not better or worse just different options is learning one chapter a day so you're learning the same book but one chapter a day which consequently means that you're going to finish in three years um and what was unique about this cycle is that we're not only finishing the cycle that ended the three chapter a day version but also the one chapter a day so that's cool it's like everybody finished then there's another track, and it is for everybody, but uh, specifically women and children, because um, thank God we're lim more limited on time, and it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing to embrace um, the different tracks. Um, but again, the Rebbe wanted to make sure everybody had something to cover in this in this arena. So this is what's called Sefer HaMitzvot. What is that? Sefer HaMitzvot literally means the book of mitzvahs. We know that there are how many mitzvahs in the Torah? Call out. 613. Good. How do we know that? It doesn't say anywhere in the five books of Moses. It doesn't say in the Chumash. By the way, there are 613 mitzvahs. Here they are. We know from the Talmud, the Talmud mentions there are 613. The formal term for that is Taryag mitzvah, 613 mitzvahs. But we still don't know which are the 613 mitzvahs. And actually, there are many counts. There are different svarim, many different authors that have written books that are called Sefer mitzvahs or called other things, Sefer HaChinuch, which enunciate, they spell out, these are the 613 mitzvahs. One of the people that wrote this book is called Rambam. Rambam wrote a book called Sefer HaMitzvos. It's one of the main ones that are referenced. He actually wrote it before he wrote the Mishnah Torah, before he wrote the Yad HaChazaka. And some people say it was even a prerequisite because he knew that he was going to write a book about all the halachos covering all the mitzvahs. So he first wrote this book, spelling out what those mitzvahs are. And then based on that, he wrote his other Mishnah Torah. So what's interesting, though, is really, in a way, they have no connection. And if you would learn the Sefer HaMitzvos in the order of the way it's written, it would have the only connection to the three chapter version would be that it was written by the same author. <laughs> so in order for it to be on a similar track, so there's the whole idea is that we're united on this. They took the Sefer HaMitzvos, which is written mitzvah number one, mitzvah number two, mitzvah number three, and they figured it out to align it with the three chapter a day track. So Let's say, I don't know, let's say on day five, we're going to learn mitzvah 31. I'm making this up. Well, as we do it, we'll go. And on day 36, we're going to learn mitzvah 122. In other words, they're not going to be in the order of the way it's written in the book, but they wrote it out in a way that whatever the whatever laws they're learning in Mishnah Torah that day of the three chapters, we are going to learn the mitzvah that coincides with it. So sometimes it's going to be the same mitzvah a few days in a row because they're talking about this halacha for a few days. And sometimes one day we're going to talk about four mitzvahs because those are all the mitzvahs that align with it. So we're learning Sefer HaMitzvah on its own, its own book, but coinciding with how it aligns with the Mishnah Torah. Okay. Um, practically, some days are going to be shorter and some days are going to be longer. There's no, like, it's not set. Think about it. Even when you learn daily chumash, some days it's a few psukim and some days it's many psukim. So the idea of Sefer Mitzvot is that it should be short and sweet. So it will be, um, but there's really no time frame in terms of how long it'll be um, each time. 
Okay. Now in terms of catch up, so to speak, because right, technically today is day two. Yesterday was day one. And since we're doing this every weekday, that means technically on Shabbos and Sunday, we're not doing it. So a few options. First of all, you could do it on your own, but I will recap. Let's say on, let's say next week, Monday, I'll say quickly what Sunday and what Shabbos and Sunday were so that we don't completely miss the, um, so it's not like we're like every day of the year, minus two days a week. Um, and we'll see, depending on what they are, it might, you know, be a part of it. It might be something different. So we'll play that by year. But if you do it on your own, even better. But we'll definitely mention it, okay? So you're not, like, stranded. Okay. So, so yesterday and today actually are very aligned. So it's very, very helpful. We're basically starting with the Rambam's introduction to the myth, right? Uh, Ramam wrote a book and he's introducing, he's writing his own author's note about what this book is. And he basically says, um, okay, he basically says, okay, there are 613 mitzvahs in the Torah based on what the Talmud says. The Talmud then says that there's two, um, there's two categories. There's the 248 Asses, which are the positive mitzvahs. In other words, do this. This is something you do. This is something you do. 248. And then, mouth with your mouth, how many low sases are there? Well, 613 minus 248? 365. 365. 365 low sases, which means do not do's or negative commandments, things that you don't do. Um, and again, this is common knowledge across the board, and, and Tama brings this down. Um, the comparisons, the analogies for the 248 yes commandments are that they're compared to our limbs, a varim, our limbs. And typically for the 365 don'ts, people compare it to the, um, to the gidim, which are sinews. Um, but actually the, the, the Rambam uses that the 365 are like the 365, what else, what else is 365? Very common days of the year. So the 204, I see everyone's mouth. Thank you. I totally hear what you're saying. The 248, go Aaron and Miriam specifically. The 248 um, limbs, they're compared to, and the 365 days of the year. And it's a beautiful um, thing that we understand here is that the 248 limbs are our body. Our body was created to do Hashem's will, to do the mitzvahs. And they're basically telling us we want like our body wants to, you know, we always talk about the conflict of, the, of, of the, the animal soul and the godly soul, but truly the animal soul, the body, they know, we know why it was created and they want us to do it. So they're basically cheering us on. I have these limbs, you have me, there's mitzvahs that are connected to me, do them. And then you have the 365 don't do's. And what's amazing about them is that every moment that you're not doing that mitzvah, even if it's not tempting you, right? I have zero temptation newsflash to kill somebody right now it has not even i did not wake up even with the temptation ask tomorrow might be a different story <laughs> but do not use this to testify in court against me but i'm actively not killing somebody right now so every single day of the year whether it's an active temptation or an active relevance you have the opportunity to fulfill Hashem's will by not doing certain things. Um, and, and what's beautiful about that is that the days are saying, don't waste me. Today is today. Today is the third day of year, Hakel year, 5783. Make the most of the day, meaning it's, it's a once in a lifetime. Today, it's a full day and every single opportunity we have to do a mitzvah, which is also sometimes not doing something, is the mitzvah. Okay. So then Ramam has to explain his principles, why. It would be a fun experiment for us to do without knowledge of any, other, of any of the laws, any of the books written. Sit down with the Torah, sit down with the five books in Torah and figure out what the 613 mitzvot are. Easier said than done. And that's why it's very interesting. There are different counts with literally different mitzvot. Now, practically, is there any difference in terms of what we're supposed to do as Jews? No. They're not saying that the things that they did not list as a 613 mitzvot are not mitzvot that we have to do. They're just saying they're not considering them the 613. So each author has different principles that they're going to base their count on. Rambam has his principles, and that's what we're going to discuss. So yesterday was a more overarching introduction. Now, starting today, we go through each principle. So that's why I don't have to be repetitive. By doing today's principles and then tomorrow's, whatever, we'll cover what we discussed, what 
Rambam discussed yesterday. So essentially, any guesses on how many principles there are? 14. Very good. There are 14 principles or rules. Basically, he had to make some kind of guidelines for himself. And the Ramam is very logical and very consistent that this is how I count the mitzvahs based on this or not based on this. Now, some of them, um, the some of them are seem repetitive, but today's three, thank God, are pretty logical, and we'll go through them and based on that, understand how he gets to his count. Okay. So number one. Number one, so there's something called rabbinic mitzvah. Rabbinic mitzvah, anybody have any examples of what would be a rabbinic mitzvah? Hanukkah, so any mitzvah of Hanukkah, like lighting the menorah, Purim also, like reading the Megillah, um, Brachos bro Rishonos, first mitzvah, I think saying, there's, there's, there's rabbinic mitzvah, okay? And of course, there are mitzvahs, we do them. Anything that we discuss that's not counted in the 613 doesn't mean it's not important. We're not pushing it to the wayside. It means there's a specific count of 613, and these is what they are. Every other mitzvah is just as important. It's not a matter of what's important or not important, it's just a matter of what's in the count. So Rambam says the rabbinic mitzvot are not part of my count. Then he says, isn't this obvious? Like, we're literally saying the 613 mitzvahs on the Torah. Why would anybody include the rabbinic mitzvahs? Especially because in the in the tract they where the Talmud says there are 613 mitz mitzvot in the Torah, it says these are the mitzvot that were given from Moshe at Sinai. So, like, literally not rabbinic, like, literally straight. So why would there be an issue with this? And why does Rambam have to make a point of clarifying? Because there's a mitzvah in the Torah to listen to the rabbinic mitzvahs. That's a mitzvah. So it might you might deduce from that that therefore the rabbinic mitzvahs are included in the count. And the, was I how long was I muted for? A second. Okay. A second. Sorry. Perfect. No problem. So and other and other counters, other authors do um, include rabbinic mitzvahs as their mitzvah as another mitzvah, and that's why he wants to specifically say how he's different. Um, another interesting thing is actually the Gemara asks this itself. Wait, why would we also have a question? Because when we, let's say we light menorah, right? What do we say? What's something a Jew does before they do a mitzvah? They say a blessing. The blessing is, Baruch atah Hashem, Elokeinu Melech Olam, Asher Kedishanu, Bimitzvota, Vitzivanu, that God commanded me to do the mitzvah and then whatever the mitzvah is. So let's say with menorah is lad lik ner Hanukkah or lad lik ner shel Hanukkah, whatever your nisach is. And so is it a mitzvah or is it not a mitzvah? Of course it is a mitzvah. The question is, is it a biblical mitzvah or a rabbinic mitzvah? And the Talmud itself asks, why are we making a blessing if it's not a, it's not a, a mitzvah from the Torah? And this is their answer because God said, listen to what the rabbis tell you to do. And that's also a mitzvah. That's why we say a bracha on it. So it is this kind of, it's a general conversation in Torah of whether it's considered um, a mitzvah, um, what type of mitzvah it's considered. Again, it's a mitzvah we all do. We treat them the same. We treat lighting the menorah the same as we treat eating matzah. Um, but in terms of the 613 count, this is the principle that Rambam has taken on. And again, it's very interesting. Other authors have taken on a different approach. Um, yes. Well, we're going to talk more about motion in the oral Torah in a second. Okay. The next principle is so there's this idea in um, Torah that there's 13 midos or 13 kind of like analysis tools that were given um, specifically as part of this whole idea that Hashem wanted it to be like kind of this system where we play off of each other, where certain experts or certain rabbis with real Ruach HaKodesh and they're really in tune with God's way of looking at things. These are certain tools and keys and codes that by looking at the Torah and seeing these specific things, you can derive things from them. Okay. And again, everything that's derived is a mitzvah. However, Rambam says that he is not including these mitzvot as some, as a specific mitzvah, a mitzvah that was derived from these 13 um, rules or codes. He is not considering um, them as one of the mitzvahs. Um, and then there's also the idea of like, there's an overarching mitzvah that might have many, 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 many details. And I'll give you one example, but he's not counting each one of those as a mitzvah, right? Is there a mitzvah in the Torah to visit the sick? It's a mitzvah. It's something that we do, but you're right. It's not one of the 613. The general mitzvah is, any guesses? Right? And then there's a bajillion offshoots of that. Any chesed thing 
which thank God we're very good at and love, um, is an offshoot of that. And in fact, it says, let's say you're visiting the sick and it's not coming from a place of obvious Yisrael, maybe it's not a mitzvah anymore. So those are examples of things that are derived. They're mitzvahs, but he's not concluding it in the count. And the third principle that he that we're discussing today, and we'll continue tomorrow with the next few, is he's only including in his count mitzvahs that are eternal, mitzvahs that are for posterity. There are a few mitzvahs, for example, things that they only did in the desert or Levites did just the first time around in this service. Those are mitzvahs. Those are mitzvahs that were relevant to them, but they're not mitzvahs that are eternal. Ramam is not considering them as part of his count. Um, and that's a very specific thing. And just a little analysis on that. Really, the whole concept and the whole idea of a mitzvah is what? Is that we're connecting to Hashem. Hashem is eternal. So inherently, a mitzvah has to be eternal. But right? if it's about connecting to Hashem, it has to be eternal. So, and, so anything that was limited to specific time was beautiful and that was necessary at the time. But it can't be this idea of an eternal mitzvah that's going to connect us to Hashem for forever and um, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me in today's Sefer HaMitzvos. Um, the official class is over. I'm happy to hang out for a little bit, but because we want this to be consistent, I want to keep it tight. And thank you and have an amazing day. Tiskula Mitzvos. You're the best. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you.